Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Eddie Marcus here again. Ever thought about what it must feel like to be helpless? To feel like you have a noose around your neck and any moment someone is going to push you off and you're going to be hanging? You ever felt hopeless? It's a critical thing to feel hopeless, to feel that there is no solution, no way out, to be jammed. It causes people to do some very strange things. We talk about America, America having a noose around its neck. We start, if we think about the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, if we think about how that came into being, when we think about the income tax, when we think about Kennedy and his executive order, 11110, which basically takes America from that dependency on the Fed and exchange for doing it themselves. Well, we know shortly after that, Kennedy brother was taken out. And right away, the president who came into office right after him rescinded what Kennedy had done. So we see what happens there. Then we turn around and a little bit later on, the other brother, the one who's beginning to understand what it's like to go through some of the wearing the shoes of other people whose heart is opening up to understand, to embrace, to have compassion for. And then he's taken out, huh? Think about the World Trade Center. Think about no weapons of mass destruction. Think about terrorization of Iraq. Think about Homeland Security. Think about the justices authorizing corporations to act as people and to have unlimited contribution at their disposal. Give them the opportunity to buy government, to buy government, have government controlled by collective few. That's a, all aside from the New World Order. Or, this is a part of the plan of the New World Order. So how do we confront this, knowing all the time about the police brutality that people experience who stand up? I propose that we look at ourselves and we acknowledge to ourselves that we all came up in one hell of a fire situation. All of us, every last one of us here on this planet, wherever we live, came up in a hell of a situation. And this is understandable that the situation in which we have been brought up had an effect on, on each of us. And since it was a hell of a situation, the effect that it had on us had a certain amount of eloquence in it. And that we are, as a people, all responsible for. And this is something that is a result of something. And it cannot be wiped out by force. It cannot be wiped out by laws. It cannot be wiped out by punishment. It must be washed out the other way. The other way of finding out what the cause is and eliminating the cause. It's by making sure that whoever felt that they had a need to respond in such a way never ever have to feel that way again. Why? Because we fixed it. 
we the people fixed it. I'd say we must forgive one another for everything we've done. We must forgive those who have betrayed us. We must forgive those who have killed our relatives. We must forgive those who we are hurting presently. We must forgive those who are hurting us presently. We must forgive our mothers and our fathers and our sons and our daughters. We must forgive one another. We must forgive our churches. We must forgive our community organizations. We must forgive the murderers. And when we forgive, we're saying that these people must be set free. Not put them in jail because they're in jail for murdering somebody. Forgive them for murdering somebody and they stay in jail. That kind of forgiveness has no merit. Forgive them means take them out. Now there are some people who are incarcerated because they are sick. The ones that are sick must be treated, not punished, but they must be treated. They must be cured. And it is the given duty and responsibility of those who in, in that profession to perfect the situation and clear it up. We must forgive everybody. Now on top of that, we must forgive all debt. Everybody that owes us owe us no more. Everyone that we owe, we owe no more. We excuse and forgive all debt. We don't owe anybody anything. Nobody owes us anything. And now, we are going to go forward. There are those who have said that money means a measure of exchange. And to a certain degree that is good because that has always been the intent. But no matter what the intent is, there is always, always an opposite at the same degree of this intent. And if you don't watch it, what you thought you were getting, you get the opposite, as we found out right now. So I'm saying to avoid that is to eliminate the money altogether. Eliminate it altogether. Somebody said, well, pay every worker a million dollars a year. If you pay every worker a million dollars a year, the same exploitation that takes place today will be taking place then because it would mean that somebody else can con someone else and end up with a million and a half instead of a million. And somebody else will have only 500000 So as long as that exists, someone will take advantage of it. And usually, one taking advantage gets over. So here again, remove the money. If you remove the money, then there's no tool to be used for such an exploitation. So what do we do? <coughs> that phone right there is trying to distract. But well, we're not going to let it distract us, are we? No, we're going to keep right on going. And so what we have to do is make sure that nothing, nothing distracts us. Whether it's the telephone, whether it's some voices on the outside, our intent is to do the will of that which has not been done. And that is to please. To please all the people. Oh my 
business. I had a lot of people that were Don't tell me I just walked away. <laughs> Don't tell me I just walked away. Well, I guess I did. Bye-bye.